Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me today. Uh, my name is Bob Ranella. I'll be your host for today's webinar. I'm one of the product managers here at Computer Aided Technology. And uh, we're going to go ahead and discuss easy 3D scanning for inspection with Creaform and Polyworks. So here's today's 30-minute breakdown for this webinar. We'll start out uh, discussing a little bit about the industry, you know, where quality control actually sits in the industry, where it's been, where it's gone, and uh, kind of how we're using it today with uh, different types of equipment. That being said, we'll follow into the hardware, some of the known used hardware in the industry today for performing quality inspection. We'll talk a little bit about the software, uh, a specific software that I'm going to use in our demonstration today. And then we'll go ahead and follow that up with a hands-on demonstration of hardware and software doing a quality control inspection. So over the past few years, uh, we've seen manufacturers continually evolve different equipment types and styles that improve performance and accommodate different types of environments and personal preferences, all in the efforts to address the hyper-competitive markets. However, in the long run, these parts require more advanced quality control. Parts that used to be simple square geometry have advanced to more organic surfaces that create a unique style. And these parts have gone from 30 critical features to measure and, and inspect to hundreds of critical features to actually measure and inspect. For example, this is a pretty typical drawing that you, we used to see, a technical drawing, and it started out this way where it was very simple, a few critical measurements, and nothing too complex. Most of these uh, critical features could actually be inspected by hand with calipers, maybe a couple pin gauges, and uh, you know, took a relatively quick amount of time to actually inspect. But as the industry started growing, Parts went from looking like this to looking like this. And now all of a sudden, what used to take an hour to inspect now takes a full shift to inspect. And what could be completed with just simple tools now is impossible to do accurately and repeatable. So what did we do as quality engineers, as inspectors? How do we attack the market and how do we keep up with demands? Well. We need to develop equipment that meets the needs and demands of the industry and complex parts that we're pumping out. Uh, so we need to create something and actually use something that uh, inspects quicker and more accurate, accurate. So that being said, let's actually take a look at some of the hardware that we see in quality control applications. So what you see here on screen is a, uh, a panel of hardware that is widely used in quality control nowadays. Over here on the left of your screen, you'll see a uh, CMM, which is a coordinate measuring machine. This particular QC tool is actually mounted typically to a granite tabletop, and you don't see it much more else than in the quality control lab. It's a uh, touch point probe measuring device where we actually have a probe tip mounted to an arm, we touch our part on uh, certain critical features and create measurements off of that. Now, the constraints with this uh, particular piece of uh, equipment is that you don't use it for parts that are longer than its reach. So it, it creates some bottlenecks with size of parts, and the time invested into this piece of equipment uh, could be a little bit longer to inspect considering you have to probe many points across one single part. Moving over to your right, you see tracked 3D scanners. Now these particular 3D scanners have been used for large volumetric inspection. You typically see these in the automotive industry or the aerospace industry when we're inspecting a chassis of a car or a fuselage. Uh, moving over next to that, we have area-based 3D scanners. Now these particular 3D scanners were designed for medium to large part inspection. Uh, these are typically mounted to a tripod or a fixed bar location somewhere in the quality control lab or a specific area set up for the scanner. And 
They're great scanners, except they're not meant to move around your shop floor or go from your quality control lab to maybe on-site customer location. They don't handle movement very well, um, but they are very good at inspecting. Now, the last category is portable 3D scanners. And these are usually for medium-sized parts. And the benefits we get out of a portable 3D scanner is you can take it anywhere in your shop. And you can even go on customer site locations for, to do inspection. That being said, today we're actually going to focus on the portable 3D scanning uh, equipment. And today with me, what I'm going to be using for this demonstration is a HandyScan 700 by Creaform. And now this is a handheld 3D scanner. It has two cameras and it has three uh, focal points for lasers with a seven laser crosshair. The resolution of this particular scanner is about two thousandths of an inch. And the accuracy of this, it'd be 12 ten thousandths of an inch. So for metrology applications, uh, it's a great tool. It's very portable, very handy for quick inspections. The measurement rate is about 480,000 measurements per second. And if you stop and think about that, comparing that to a CMM where it measures one point as quickly as you can click the CMM, this one's actually collecting 480,000 measurements per second. So we get a better average of a surface of our part. Uh, this is a NIST certified metrology piece of equipment. And the user calibration for this is actually pretty quick. It's under two minutes. It comes with its own calibration artifact. So let's actually address the software we're going to be using today. So the software I'm going to be using in this demonstration is called Polyworks. And the reason I decided to use Polyworks for today's demonstration, we'll start off with the top one, is ease of use. Polyworks has a great graphic interface similar to most CAD packages. So you don't have to go through and try and figure out how a new software operates. They try to mirror something that you're comfortable and familiar with. You have a feature tree and you have a graphic area that you actually get to manipulate in. One, another added benefit is the ASME and ISO standard inspection rules that are integrated into it. What this basically means is we could take that uh, ASME rule book for inspection and we could throw it out the window. We don't actually have to have it on hand or have it memorized when we're creating inspections. This is built right into the software. So either you, the operator, or your quality control man manager can actually program in the ASME standard rules when you're doing inspection. So if you're inspecting a certain feature and you violate one of these rules, it's actually going to pop up a critical error on screen and say, hey, you violated ASME rule uh, 10012. Now, it's great because then you can go ahead and cancel that error, delete that feature, and reacquire that the proper way. Uh, one of the, another added benefit is statistical process control, or what we call SPCs, with one click. Now, many manufacturers, uh, they need to see a feature across multiple parts, say 50 parts. We need to see how this particular feature deviates across all 50 parts. Now, normally what we do is we create an inspection on all 50 parts. We take all the information from that one feature. We throw it into an Excel document. We run some sort of macros on it. We get another Excel document out of that, and we analyze it from there. Well, with Polyworks, it's very simple. As soon as we inspect all 50 items inside Polyworks, all we have to do is select that one feature and say, give me the a SPC report for this one feature across all 50 parts. And it's just easy as one click. It'll give you your statistical bell curve. It'll give you your maxes and your mins. You can get data to see where your outliers are and how your manufacturing process is changing over all 50 parts. That way, we could actually throw that right into our report as some added benefit of information to maybe our customers or our quality control manager. Other things are industrial uh, specific functionality. Uh, this is big in areas such as aerospace. So for example, on a fuselage, the uh, flushing gap is, is very critical. 
where a door meets a door frame. When you're up at 3,000 feet in the air, you need to make sure that door seal holds true. You don't want any loss of pressure. So you need to properly inspect uh, the door frame and the door with something called flush and gap. And usually this is a, a matter of collecting a certain amount of measurement points, doing some measurement interpolation, maybe writing some sort of uh, equation, and then and interpreting the data from there. Well, inside Polyworks, there is an actual flush and gap tool, and it meets industry standards for aerospace. So I can scan up my door frame, I can scan up my door, have the software made them together, and then I can click flush and gap tool. And it will give me my report based off of aerospace needs, which is a huge benefit and a huge time save. There are other industry functionality, but I figured that was one to really point out. Uh, fully customizable reports. Every company likes their own reporting style. Maybe you have a customer that wants their report different than a cookie cutter PPAP inspection report or a first article inspection report. Uh, truly seamless multi-part inspection. This is where I can create a template uh, for inspecting a certain part. And then as soon as I create that template, all I have to do is scan up all 50 parts, 100 parts, and it will apply that template and spit out a report for each part. Other things as macros and collaboration are also involved. So in today's demonstration, uh, the workflow of 3D scanning to actual reports starts with our part preparation. That's where we actually set up our part, and in this particular case, with our HandyScan 700, we have to place positioning targets or registration targets on the surface of our part. That allows us to move it around and not have to worry about error due to bumping or moving. Next, we digitize the surface, i.e. scan the part. And then in the background, for step three, the surface will actually um, analyze all the points, the measurement points you created, and spit out a mesh that fits the physical part in a digital world as best as possible and minimizes the error. Following that, we go into our Polyworks software. We use our graphic user interface to actually collect critical features, and we set our tolerances or our GD&T callouts. And then finally, we set up our report in the report style we want. So that's just a quick overview of what we're gonna do in our demonstration. Let's go ahead and actually jump into that demonstration. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and pop up my software, and then we'll go ahead and pop up our camera in our top, red corner, our top right hand corner. You can see I actually have our uh, part that we're gonna to use today, and I've already prepped it. I've put positioning targets all over the surface of this part. Now, the rule of thumb for these registration targets is it's got to see five in pretty much a hand width area or the viewing window of the scanner. And you randomly put them across the surface. There's no real rhyme or reason as long as you can see five in the window of that scanner. I'm going to be using this turntable today in order to stay within the camera's window for you guys to see me scan it. And these positioning targets come in a handy little box with uh, adhesive targets. Now these are known to the actual scanner. They know the thickness, the diameter, and the reflectivity. So it helps create an alignment of my part in three-dimensional space. So here we have the HandyScan 700. On the back of the actual scanner, we have an on-off button. We have a toggle up-down button, and we have a menu button. This allows the user to actually scan and operate from the scanner without having to run back to their computer to press a button. Also on screen you will see that I have the software called Polyworks Inspector up. And inside this software what we're going to do is we're going to actually start the scanning session. So you will see in the lower right hand corner of your screen, I'm going to select my Creoform scanner. It's going to pop up with a scanning window and we're going to go ahead and start that acquisition. This gets me into scanning mode. So I'm ready to go ahead and scan. So we'll go ahead and activate the actual scanner. And you can see, uh, graphically, it's projecting that seven laser crosshair on our part. 
And visually, I, hopefully you can see on the camera that it's actually projecting it on the physical part as well. It's a relatively quick scan for this particular part. You can see how quickly it's actually acquiring the surface. And that's because of that 480,000 measurements per second. So at 480,000 measurements per second, we have hundreds of thousands of points that represent our physical surface. And that's really gonna help me when I start inspecting these critical features, get a better average, uh, statistical average for my measurements. That'll help me get repeatable measurements that is actually independent of the user as well. So the reason I'm using this turntable is that, like I said before, it makes it pretty easy to rotate it and still be within the reference frame of the camera. But I can go ahead and pause it, pick up my part, move it around on the table, and it'll know that I've moved it and pick up right where I left off. Now using the actual scanner itself is kind of like painting. As long as I see it on screen, I've acquired it, and I've optimized those measurements in that area. At any time, I can pause the actual scanner on the back of the scanner. We can go over to our screen. We can rotate our graphic image and see what we've acquired of our scan. Maybe zoom in. It looks like I've missed a couple uh, spots over here. And continue scanning right over in that region. So we'll go back over here and make sure we gather that. Now, one benefit of the HandyScan 700 is that I can double tap the uh, on-off button and get into a single laser mode. That allows me to focus on fine regions, or maybe a fine paintbrush would be a little bit better to get into crevices. We'll go back into that seven laser mode. Now, I can pick up my part as well, and I can move it. Again, that's because of the registration targets. So I don't have to have a granite table or create a fixture for my specific part in order to avoid vibrations from the shop floor. So it truly lives up to its portability with this scanner and the scanner system setup. So we'll go ahead and finish up our scan here. Make sure we got all the information we need. Looks like it. And then we'll go ahead and do that process. So right now we have a raw scan. I'm going to go ahead and quickly jump into my edit mode because I want to get rid of any information that's not part of my scan. Very simple to do. All I have to do is click my part in my virtual area, invert the selection, delete noise. Looks like we got a little bit of this table here. I'll actually use a tool called background selection, or we'll use the automatic background selection. Actually, we'll use the background selection, and we'll select our table, and we'll just delete that out. So all we're left with our part is our part. Now this helps. I didn't actually have to delete out my table, but it helps with file size. It's just quicker to process, quicker to store. So it's always good to clean up our files. So here is where it's actually digitizing it into a mesh. Okay, it's going through, looking at all the points and it's analyzing it, making sure there's no errors, and it's gonna spit out an optimized surface, which is our part right here. So we'll go ahead and accept that. We'll hide our full screen. And in a second here, it'll actually go ahead and pop it into uh, Polyworks software. And give it a second to update here. And here we go. We've got our mesh inside our software. It was a pretty quick and uh, easy process to go ahead and acquire that scan. Now we're going to move forward onto the actual uh, inspection portion. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and import my CAD model. And I'm importing an iGIS file. Now you can import an iGIS or a STEP or native uh, CAD file such as a SOLIDWORKS part file. And in some cases, you can actually import PMI data as well. So it actually helps you from design to inspection identify critical features. So here in the graphic area, we have our CAD file and we have our scan. The first thing we want to do is tell the software to align them. 
So PolyWorks has this tool called Best Fit Data Reference Objects. And what it does is by activating it, all I have to do is hit start, it will automatically align the CAD to the scan or the scan to the CAD. Now this is just the best fit, so it minimizes error across the surface. But it's a pretty good representation of how that scan fits the CAD. And we can actually go into a second verification and use a color map tool. This color map tool is actually going to show me how well it fits the surface. So we can, show, we can see here that there's a, a little bit of deviation in the center, a um, little bit of blue around the ends. Basically, what this is showing me with the color map I have set up is that there's a, a little bit of extrusion in the center, a little bit of sagging along the ends. Maybe that's from the manufacturing process where it was ejected out of its mold a little too quickly, and it didn't didn't harden enough while it was cooling on a flat surface, so the end started sagging and the middle deformed from the ejector pins. And that was just a quick color map, quick overlie of our scan to our cat. So let's go ahead and start our inspection template. The first thing we want to do, though, is we actually want to set up a better alignment scheme. And we're going to do that by creating a datum alignment. So what I'm going to do here is I've used this tool called Create Features. And what I can do is I can hover over my part. Actually, let's turn off that color map real quick. And we'll go ahead and hover over our part. And you can see the software is actually identifying similar geometry, whether it be a cone, whether it be a circle, whether it be a flat surface. It has feature recognition, so it actually helps me in the graphic area identify certain critical features. So, for example, I want to assign datum A to this top surface. It's as easy as clicking it. You can see it added a little flag that says this is now datum A. The next thing we'll do is we'll assign datum B. And we'll actually use this inner conical surface as datum B. And then the next thing we'll do, the last one, would be datum C. We'll actually use this circle for datum C. Now that we've identified our datum A, B, and C, we'll ask the software to pull that out of the scan. And you can see the information populated pretty quickly. And then we'll go and recreate an alignment based off of our datums A, B, and C. So I've gone into my alignment tool, and I'm ready to align my datum A, B, and C. It's very easy. In the graphic area, all I have to do is select datum A, and you'll actually start seeing the scan shift, datum B, and datum C. Now we are aligned to our datums. So from here, all we have to do is start calling out our critical features. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to go back into my feature creation tool, and I'm going to start extracting features from my CAD scan alignment. So we'll grab a couple of cones, grab a cone on, some of the cones on the other side. And it's easy as just picking in the graphic area. Then we'll go ahead up here at the top and say, let's grab some linear measurements. So let's say we want to create a measurement from here, this cone, to this cone. And we could just drag it out. We'll go from this cone over to our other cone. drag it out here, and maybe from this cone to this cone. And we'll drag out both dimensions. And you can see it graphically laying out pretty easy, pretty easy to uh, identify. And then we'll go ahead and tell, uh, go over to our feature design tree and tell the software to extract that information. 
the measurements off of our scan. And you'll see it's populated all the leader flags with all the information. Next, we can go into each dimension, say distance one, and down here at the bottom, we have a geometrical control area or table. And we can start identifying our tolerances. We could say plus or minus half a millimeter for that one. And you'll see it'll identify it in red if it's out of tolerance. We'll go to distance two and we'll actually do the same thing. Now, say we want datum C to have a uh, geometrical uh, callout. So right now we have a diameter callout, or X, Y, Z position from datum C. We could easily just go over to the right and say there's a little icon that says add GD and T control. So you can click on that. And let's say true position, there's a little helpful box that pops up. All we have to do is go to each drop down and say true position to A and B within, we'll just leave it at one. And it'll go ahead and create it and add it into datum C and, a, and it passed. So we've got a few pieces of information. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and create our customizable report. Now to do this, we'll start off by turning off all of our items in our tree so we can hide them graphically. We'll hide our scan because we don't really need to see that. And then we'll start adding in some screenshots. So up here at the top is a capture 3D scene. This creates a picture of what's on screen. So we'll do a front view, maybe a side view, or a top view, side view, maybe a front view. And then over here in my tree, there's a little report tab. I can double click on that and it'll pop up my report page. And you can see it through all the images on my report page, but they're not quite in a place where I want them. So I want all three of these images actually to be on this first page. So what I can do is I can grab this image, move it around, and I can actually drag it all the way over here onto the first page. And you know what, we got a lot of white space in this image, so I could actually double click on that, shrink some of this white space, and then move it to where I want it. Maybe we'll put it over here. If I wanted to increase the size or decrease the size, we could do that as well. We'll go grab the other two images, throw them on page one, and do the same. Minimize some of that white space. We'll put this over here, and we'll put this over here maybe next to the side view. So you can put in specific views if you want. You can add them, you can change them. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll go back to our inspection scene and we'll pull up some of our information, such as our datum A, B, and C. I want that in my report. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn those back on. We'll look at it from a top view and we'll take this snapshot yeah, it'll throw it into our report. And now that I have them highlighted in my feature tree, there's a little table button that looks like a, an Excel spreadsheet. If I click on that with these items highlighted, when I go to my report page, I've got a little table of our datums. So you can see where that is in our report. Delete out this white page. So that just follows next in our report. Now let's go ahead and grab some of our feature as well, our feature, our critical features as well. So our cones, we'll go ahead and turn those back on, take a snapshot, and then hit that table icon. We'll go back over to report, just so we can show it. Now we've got a snapshot of what cone one through six is, and we got a little table that features one through six with our nominal, our measured, our tolerance, our devi deviation, 
whether it passed or failed, and what's out of tolerance. But say I didn't like this table. I wanted to change something on it or take something out. So I could double click on the table, grab the items I don't want, and just drag them off screen, like out of tolerance. And we could say, we'll take out the nominals as well, because all we care about is the measured value. And when I close this box, it'll automatically update our table. So we can continue on this process and identify all of our uh, critical features, and we can throw them in tables. We can make pictures of them as well, and we can even customize our report. So for example, I want to add in my logo, my company's logo at the top here. So we'll go to images. We'll go ahead and select our logo. We'll give it a second to populate. And we'll throw it up here at the top. Last thing we'll do is we'll actually export out this um, report, save it on my desktop. And I have uh, my finalized report to hand off to, say, our customer or our quality control manager. So here we go. Our views, our tables, with our snapshots to identify which hole is which, which cone is which, and the measurements, and we're good to go. And that's pretty much the entire workflow of inspecting with a 3D scanner all the way through Polyworks and creating our own customizable report. Last thing I want to mention is there is a reviewing software slash app from Polyworks that you could download on your phone, tablet, or computer that's free where your quality control manager or your customer can actually review your project as you're working on it. This allows your quality control manager to see what you're inspecting, and if he wants additional information on a specific feature, he can add in notes, and it automatically updates it while you're working on it. So you can get live feedback from your quality control manager or the customer without having to have downtime between delivering the report and going back and capturing more information. And this is a free add-on that's easy to download on your phone, tablet, or computer. That's all I have to, for you guys today. It looks like we're three minutes past. Um, if you guys do have any further questions, uh, I'll take emails. We'll get in contact in the future. It looks like uh, we've lost our host. So uh, we'll call it a day. And thank you for you guys, you guys for your time. And uh, if you have any further information, visit our website at cati.com. Thank you guys very much.